So part of the reason why there's so much disrest and anxiety right now in the workplace is because there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, one of my favorite emotional equations is anxiety equals uncertainty times powerlessness. So how do we create certainty when there's a lot of uncertainty? Well, the number one thing I can advise people to do is to communicate. Uh, people in the, in the absence of fact or communication, People have a tendency to actually imagine the worst. And so that what, that's what makes them anxious. So communicating, being transparent, building trust, because trust is foundational in all relationships, and confidence is built on top of trust. So first you have to build the trust, and the trust requires communication. So even if you're going to give communication that's hard, difficult, bad news, it's actually better than just having sort of the gaping hole of mystery. When there's layoffs uh, in a company, there are two key constituencies. There's the people who are getting laid off and there's the people who are staying behind. When it comes to the people who are getting laid off, the absolute first and foremost thing to do is to just show respect. So there are two things you remember when you get laid off. Did the person do it in a gracious way? Did they make me feel respected? And number two is, did I actually get uh, some kind of severance that gave me a sense of safety and security? I'm a big fan of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So the base of your pyramid needs to be secure. If you feel respected in the process of getting laid off, and if you feel like your basic needs are getting moderately met at least, then, the pro then it won't be quite as painful. As for those who are left behind, those who are not getting laid off, they need to feel like there's some level of transparency to understanding why is this happening? Uh, is this the first of many layoffs to come? What kind of confirmation can leaders give us that um, there won't be another round of lay layoffs two weeks later or two months later? And what can we do within the organization to improve things such that layoffs are less likely anytime in the near future? So that kind of communication will help people have more power, more sense of an influence. If anxiety equals uncertainty times powerlessness, the certainty comes from communication. The powerlessness can be solved by actually having people feel like they have some level of influence in the organization to make things better. Wow. Uh, so there's a lot of equations. In my, my new book, Emotional Equations, which comes out in January, I've got all kinds of equations. I, I'll tell you, the, the one that actually helped me in the worst of times two or three years ago was despair equals suffering minus meaning. And I actually then shared that with our leaders in the company. Let me explain it. So suffering is to some degree a constant in life. If you're a Buddhist, you, that's a noble truth of Buddhist, Buddhism. But if you're a CEO or a leader in a recession, it's just part of the way things are. Suffering is ever-present. It's a constant. Meaning, on the other hand, is a variable. So in this algebra that we're talking about here, this, this sort of management algebra, suffering's a constant, meaning's a variable. The more you give meaning to things, the less despair you have. So long story short is when you're going through really difficult times, for yourself as well as for your the people you work with because leaders are the emotional thermostats for their group wherever you set your emotions is where the group's going to end up that's true of whether it's in your family true of a ceo true of you know the leader of a country true of the leader of a small department so being able to set that thermostat in the right place has a lot to do with where how you find meaning in a difficult time for me that meant Asking myself almost daily, what did I learn today? Because actually in the worst of times, we tend to be challenged the most and we learn the most. And, uh, Winston Churchill, person I think people, people in England know very well, said, when you're going through hell, just keep going. <laughs> well, I would say keep going and learn. Learn the lesson and be curious. Be curious about what there is to be learned and what level of meaning, or what kind of meaning you're going to get in the process.
let me use an example of uh, an emotionally intelligent CEO who in the worst of times was able to help his team and his company, very large company, uh, jump to new heights. Alan Mullally is the CEO of Ford. Now, if you recall in the United States, about two or three years ago, Chrysler and GM both had to get bailed out, or they didn't really have to get bailed out. They, they, they got some bailout, and then they actually went bankrupt in one case. The other one had, got, had to get bought. Ford, on the other hand, somehow was able to rise above that. And one of the things that was fascinating at Ford during that time, during the time when there was a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety about the, the, the automobile industry being able to survive in the U.S., is Alan Mullally, as the CEO of Ford, made a major effort to not take a bunker mentality. This is what happens when CEOs tend to actually be in the most stressful of times. They spend more time in their offices, behind closed doors, talking to people about how to solve things. And they use lots of war metaphors. <laughs> they talk about, you know, how, you know, Alan Mullally did the opposite. He spent a lot of time out in the field. He spent a lot of time talking about the vision of where Ford's going. And he helped Ford as an organization rise to the occasion. And had a lot to do with his emotional intelligence. I, I, I recently wrote a blog about the 10 most emotionally intelligent CEOs in America of Fortune 500 companies. And he was really at the top of the list. Uh, and it's partly because he's been able to show his emotional intelligence and his emotion and his ability to use emotional equations as a means of understanding how to create an environment where there's great psycho hygiene, um, which basically means psycho hygiene. How do we as people in an organization cleanse ourselves um, when we're going through difficult times. Most companies and most organizations feel like sweat boxes, and there's not a whole, not a whole lot of psycho hygiene going on, and we know what happens when you're in a sweat box. It sort of gets smelly. What's interesting is I was a CEO for almost two dozen years, 24 years. And um, during that time, I thought I had to be a superhuman in order to be a CEO. And what I came to learn over time was it wasn't about being a superhuman. It was about being a superhuman. <laughs> it was understanding my emotions and understanding the emotions of others. It's having good external antenna and good internal antenna. So... Why is that important? Why is it important that leaders are emotionally intelligent? Well, Dan Goldman, who wrote the book Emotional Intelligence, has shown that two-thirds of the success of leaders has to do with their EQ, not their IQ or the level of experience. Secondly, uh, Matt Lieberman, a neuroscientist, has proven that when people are trying to make decisions in a, at a point of emotional reactivity, when they're most stirred up, they lose 10 to 15 points of IQ during that time. So the, the truth is we get dumb when we make decisions without actually being thoughtful about what's going through us. And just labeling the emotion and turning it into an equation is one way to do that. Finally, emotions are contagious. We know that. The flu is contagious and so is the fear. Fear is like in, a, in the petri dish of an organization. It's something that spreads very quickly. So if you know emotions are contagious... And we know that 50 to 70% of the emotional content of how groups feel about their group has to do with how they feel about their leader. So the leader is like the emotional thermostat for the group. What it says to us is that how we show up with our emotions as leaders has an enormous impact on everybody around us and on the, our effectiveness as a leader.